Hey there, this is Pastor Jeff, and these are our daily lectionary readings for Saturday, August 13th, 2022. We have our three readings. Psalm 82, once again, is our psalm reading. We're going to continue in 1 Samuel for our Old Testament reading. Today, it will be from chapter 6, and then our New Testament reading will be coming from the Gospel of Matthew 24, 15 through 27. Let us listen in to our scriptures for the day. Psalm 82. God calls the judges into his courtroom. He puts all the judges in the dock. Enough. You've corrupted justice long enough. You've let the wicked get away with murder. You're here to defend the defense list, to make sure that underdogs get a fair break. Your job is to stand up for the powerless and prosecute all those who exploit them. Ignorant judges, head in the sand judges, they haven't a clue of what's going on, and now everything is falling apart. The world's coming unglued. I appointed you judges, each one of you, deputies of the high God, but you've betrayed your commission, and now you've stripped of your rank. Busted! Oh God, give them what they've got coming. You've got the whole world in your hands. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 6, verses 1 through 16. After the chest of God had been among the Philistine people for seven months, the Philistine leaders called together the religious professionals, the priests and experts on the supernatural for consolation, how can we get rid of this chest of God? Get it off of our hands without making things worse. Tell us, they said, if you're going to send the chest of the God of Israel back, don't just dump it on them. Pay compensation. Then you will be healed. After you're in the clear again, God will let up on you. Why wouldn't he? And what exactly would make for an adequate compensation? Five gold tumors and five gold rats, they said, to match the number of Philistine leaders. Since all of you leaders and people suffered the same plague, make replicas of the tumors and rats that are devastating the country and present them as an offering to the glory of God of Israel. Then maybe he'll ease up and not be so hard on you and your gods and on your country. Why be stubborn like the Egyptians and Pharaoh? God didn't quit pounding on them until they let the people go. Only then did they let up. So here's what you do. Take a brand new ox cart and two cows that have never been in harness. Hitch the cows to the ox cart and send their calves back to the barn. Put the chest of God on the cart. Secure the gold replicas of the tumors and rats that you are offering as compensation in a sack and set them next to the chest. Then send it off, but keep your eye on it. If it heads straight back to where it came from, toward Beth Shemesha, it is clear that this catastrophe is a divine judgment. But if not, we'll know that God has nothing to do with it. It was just an accident. So that's what they did. They hitched two cows to the cart, put their calves in the barn, and placed the chest of God and the sack of gold rats and tumors on the cart. The cows headed straight for home, down the road to Beth Shemesh straying neither right nor left, mooing all of the way. The Philistine leaders followed them to the outskirts of Beth Shemash. The people of Beth Shemash were harvesting wheat in the valley. They looked up and they saw the chest. Elated, they ran to meet it. The cart came to the field of Joshua, of Beth Shemesh, and stopped there beside a huge boulder. The harvesters tore the cart to pieces, then chopped up the wood 
and sacrificed the cows as a burnt offering to God. The Levites, they took charge of the chest of God and the sack containing the gold offerings, placing them on the boulder, offering the sacrifices. Everyone in Beth Shemesh worshipped God most heartily that day. When the five Philistine leaders saw what they came to see, they returned the same day to Ekron. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 15 through 28. But be ready to run for it when you see the monster of desecration set up in the temple sanctuary. The prophet Daniel described this. If you've read Daniel, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're living in Judea at the time, run for the hills. If you're working in the yard, don't return to the house to get anything. If you're out in the field, don't go back and get your coat. Pregnant and nursing mothers will have it especially hard. Hope and pray this won't happen during the winter or on a Sabbath. This is going to be trouble on a scale beyond what the world has ever seen or will see again. If these days of trouble were left to run their course, nobody would make it. But on account of God's chosen people, the trouble will be cut short. If anyone tries to flag you down, calling out, Here's the Messiah! Or points, There he is. Don't fall for it. Fake messiahs and lying preachers are going to pop up everywhere. Their impressive credentials and bewitching performances will pull the wool over the eyes of even those who ought to know better. But I've given you fair warning. So if they say, run to the country and see him arrive, or quick, get downtown, see him, come, don't give them the time of the day. The arrival of the Son of Man isn't something you're going to see. He comes like swift lightning to you. Whenever you see crowds gathering, think of carrion vultures circling, moving in, hovering over a rotting carcass. You can be quite sure that it's not the living Son of Man pulling in those crowds. And here ends our readings for the day.